my two battlers. I'm very excited for today's video. I am and always have been a huge fan of Blastoise for the Ultra League. Keep in mind with Blastoise, he is a pick that you do have to max out if you're going to be using him in the Ultra League. Bruh. So it could be, you know, a big, a big dust investment. But the moveset typically that I use is Water Gun, Hydro Cannon. So you want the Community Day exclusive move and then Ice Beam. I was very happy to hear that House Stark is also a big fan of Blastoise for the Go Battle Ultra League. House Stark, shout out to you. I love Blastoise as well. I basically am maining the Blastoise in the play. I believe I lead with him a lot, if not every single time. But then also I'm going to be bringing the Giratina a lot, as well as I actually use um, the King play, I guess, or the King pick, um, being Articuno. You know, after all of these battles, I think I ended up going four and one in this specific set. Um, it definitely is preferred to um, lead with Articuno. Even if you don't like the lead, just lead with the Articuno. It's not a very good swap in play. I guess my thought behind it was if I open up with Blastoise and they actually decide to open up with Grass for some reason, like a, a Venusaur, Meganium, etc., then I would much rather swap into the Articuno, force them to counter swap, and then have a bunch of built up energy to where I can just keep throwing icy winds. My Articuno is not double moved. All I have is Ice Shard and Icy Wind. All right, so going in against the first opponent here, looks like it was Burritos. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of what I like sometimes and why I love Blastoise, right? If they open up with the Swampert, um, they basically have to still go for the Earthquake. I'm not going to care too much at all about the Hydro Cannons and the Water Gun and Pressure with the Ice Beam Hydro Cannon is going to put a lot more pressure on the Swamper. So it does kind of force the swap a lot of the times. I have seen people stay in on that matchup and just go for the Earthquake, which I still don't shield. And, um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of 50-50. It just depends on how you play it and if you guess the shield right or if you don't. But that is what I like about Blastoise, his bulk combined with the pressure that he can put on common meta picks like Swampert and Registeel and even the Snorlax here. Uh, Blastoise is pretty versatile indeed. Um, I'm still kind of deciding on whether I should stay with Ice Beam on this Blastoise or opt for Flash Cannon. For the moment, I'm still going to be sticking with Ice Beam. If you've tried out Flash Cannon yourself on a Blastoise for the Fairy coverage and you think you like it, um, definitely throw that in the comments below. I think I would love to give it a shot. I've been thinking about it a lot. Um, now they come in with the Swampert at this point. Unfortunately, they were able to hit that Hydro Cannon before I hit any Icy Winds. So I decide at this point, I'm like, okay, they're locked in at this point with their switch. So I'm just gonna go into the Giratina, basically force the Earthquake out of them, make them use their energy. And I'm just gonna go straight Shadow Claw, Dragon Claw into the Swampert. I believe they let it go down, although no, they, they don't. They probably should have, they don't, but they um, end up using the shield. So now they are shieldless. They double Earthquake into me, which at this point I'm like, basically I'm just relying on this Articuno for the W and it worked out successfully. I think they definitely needed to save that shield because I'm able to hit back-to-back -back Icy Winds into the Giratina, which KOs, and then the Swampert at this point. Um, I think, yeah, we just Ice Shard down GG's Trainer. Into the next round. So look, as you can see, this person actually opened up with Grass. Okay, they brought the Venusaur as the open here. Now I do a counter swap into my Articuno and apparently they also counter swap into an Articuno. As you notice though, so again, um, on my Articuno, I definitely, all the time, I'm gonna prefer Ice Shard and Icy Wind, specifically Ice Shard because of the energy gain. From what you can see on their Articuno, they have opted for Frost Breath, um, which is still dealing neutral, but the energy gain with Frost Breath is not even really comparable to the energy gain with Ice Shard. Frost Breath will be more of a damage move and Ice Shard is more the energy move on an Articuno, okay? so. I have, I believe, back-to-back -back Icy Winds built up at this point. If not, just one more Ice Shard. Okay, we do have the back-to-back, -back, so we Icy Wind this Swampert into Eternity. I believe they tried Mud Shot down. I don't think they should have tried that. Um, it was it was a little close, though. It was a little close of a call, a little close for comfort, so I don't blame them at all. Um, I, I knew that they had to basically swap back into their Venusaur, so I did anticipate that swap, and I answered immediately by counter-swapping into my Giratina. I believe I actually do end up investing one shield in the Giratina against the Venusaur because even even in Ultra League, even resisting the Frenzy Plants and the Sludge Bombs, just the energy efficiency with Venusaur and Vine Whip, um, the Frenzy Plants still still hit like a truck. So I think I use the shield here. Yes, I do. Um, I shield the Frenzy Plant and I believe I go for a straight Dragon Claw. I anticipated their swap. Um, I was keeping an eye on the Switch Clock. You should do that as well too. Keep an eye on it as much as you can. Um, that really helps me with anticipating swaps and also keeping track of their energy and just how overall how the battle is pacing, right? You always got to keep track of it. So 
we take out the Swamper with the Hydro Cannon, and I believe we take the W actually with the Hydro Cannon in to the Venusaur, GG's trainer. Right into the next battle here again. I open up Blastoise every time. Back to back, we see Venusaur lead. So just like before, I counter swap an Articuno. It looks like they do not have an Articuno, so they just bring in their um, Swampert. Now, I am more comfortable in this matchup, definitely, because I was able to hit a Icy Wind before they pretty much did anything. I believe I actually still end up investing one shield. Um, Please don't tell me I did two. I think, if anything, just invest one and then just go straight Ice Shard, Icy Wind. Honestly, you don't even really need to invest any shields at all. That might have been part of my problem and how I've been playing Articuno. If you get the first Icy Wind, just go straight Ice Shard, Icy Wind. Um, because, you know, as the debuffs continue, that Swampert's going to do basically nothing. The Hydro Cannons will still hit hard. At that point, I took a little bit of a gamble on being able to Ice Shard down, and we successfully did. So I've got energy built up, and I believe we get back to back into the Giratina. No, we do not. I think I wanted to reserve the Spare Icy one that I built up just in case, because they are debuffed at this point. I can just... Um, not counter swap, but I guess answer their Giratina with mine and they come back in with their Venusaur and we know how this matchup plays out, right? It's <laughs> um, I invest at least one shield at this point because I've seen their full comp. It's uh, pretty much GG's. I'm just going to go straight Shadow Claw, Dragon Claw to get the Venusaur out of there as quick as possible because again, the Frenzy Plants even being resisted will still hit like a truck and I want to reserve as much energy as I can on the Giratina um, because they still have a considerable chunk of life left on their Giratina. I want to just go for the Dragon Claw and then come back in with the Articuno, which I saved the Icy Wind on. And we, at this point, it's pretty much locked in. So I just come back in with the Blastoise, I'm not trying to BM or anything. I just want a Water Gun down, um, but that is a hard GG's trainer. Well played indeed. And the next opponent here is Get Up Out, I think that was. But again, they opened up with the Swampert. I open up with the Blastoise. As you can see, it, it forced them to swap you don't really need to swap but they ended up swapping anyways because they know they basically have to go for the earthquake they come back in with their giratina i'm not too worried about it i'm like you know what since they led with the swampert and they answered with the giratina i'm just gonna stay in i went for a bait as you saw a second ago but at this point i just want to go straight for the ice beam um, i don't remember if it lands or not i think they shield oh no it does land look at that so you know it doesn't do as much as you think it would um remember though again this is ultra league uh, Mons are so much bulkier than they will be in the Great League, but um, since it did go unshielded, I'm able to come in with the Articuno to Ice Shard down and get rid of their Giratina. And again, you know, unfortunately, he was able to hit the Hydro Cannon before I could hit an Icy Wind. So I do decide to invest a shield at that point, and then I go for the Icy Wind to debuff them. And I know how the rest of that matchup goes, but at that, at that point, they were um, two shields and I was one shield. So I ended up swapping because I, I kind of was at a, at a disadvantage, but this made it even worse because they had the Steelix sitting in the back. Um, there's not really much I can do. I just go straight ancient power cause I'm praying for the boost, um, which we actually do end up getting the boost funny enough. So, um, at that point I'm like, okay, I'm boosted once. I still don't like how the battle's pacing. So I'm just going to go straight shadow claw or dragon claw. I'll invest a shield. And I believe I swapped out, which honestly was, a mistake since I was boosted I probably should have just stayed in instead of um, swapping out into this Articuno um, swapping out to my Articuno into their Steelix because then they can you know counter swap or at least answer with their Swampert here and again Swampert being so fast I'm not gonna be able to outpace him to the hydro cannons to hit my icy winds I can't even hit the one that I reached unfortunately he mud shot down and it's pretty much GG's and basically because I did not stay in when I had the Giratina boosted. I was a little hasty, so the lesson was learned with that. Um, I don't know, honestly, if that even made a difference. I don't think I would have won, even if I did not, but it was a mistake, definitely, so GG's trainer. Um, I ended up changing it up a little bit. It's the exact same line, but I decided to lead with the Articuno. That's the main lesson that I learned, and funny enough, we ran into another trainer who led with the Venusaur. And um, interestingly enough too, as you can see, they brought the Polyrath. The um, Dynamic Punch did a considerable amount of damage, much more than I thought it would, but they are debuffed. And I'm like, you know what? You're baiting with the Ice Punch, which as you can see, they were, they did. They literally just baited with the Ice Punch. So I go for another Icy Wind, which is obviously resisted, but they're not gonna be doing much of anything at all to me. So I'm just gonna keep going Icy Wind here. Um, unfortunately, I ended up shielding an Ice Punch there. That probably was not a great investment of a shield. I feel like that was a wasted opportunity with the way I played that. 
Um, it's not it's not too big of a deal though because they end up swapping out and they also have a steelix i feel like i'm starting to see steelix more often people definitely were sleeping on steelix at the beginning of this preseason um, for the ultra league and go battle league and we're seeing it much more often so you know with that being said in my opinion i think blastoise is going to uh, become more and more common and more and more popular because i've seen um, even even off screen from these battles, I've seen people comp with Steelix and Swampert a few different times um, and Blastoise definitely puts a damper in that strategy. So keep that in mind. They um, they were smart. They ended up shielding the Ice Beam, but I'm like, you know what? I'll just go for another Ice Beam because I built up tons of energy. And then I'm like, I, I thought they were going to go straight for a Frenzy, but I had like nothing left on the Articuno, like 0.5 HP. So a Vine Whip ends up finishing the job there. Now I come back in with the Giratina and because of the way this battle has played, um, that is going to be a hard GG's trainer. Um, even with that clutch dynamic punch from that Polyrath, it hit really hard into the Articuno, but it's still not able to keep up with the Icy Wind debuffs and the way that I comped with Blastoise and saving Giratina for the last, right? Save the best for last. GG's train. Again, as always, thank you for watching. Um, and I had a lot of fun with this team too. I do like opening with the Blastoise, honestly. I feel like what I need to do is either drop Articuno or just keep the comp the same and lead Articuno every time. Let me know too what you think about Blastoise. Do you like using it? Do you use it the same way? Has anybody tried to bite Blastoise? That seems like it might be a meme, but could be interesting. Also, has anybody tried a Flash Cannon Blastoise? That seems like it could be fun as well. My Blastoise does have glasses, but the swag for this video goes above and beyond. On that i'm very happy to announce that i finally have everything for my merch put together <laughs> yeah boy um if it's not launched already it is going to be launched very shortly this is the design that i ended up going with and i chose this design obviously i want something that's simple i want something that looks clean i don't want it to be too you know over extravagant i don't know even though i like my logo i wanted something special right it's so obviously the design featured it's a hashtag battlers thing it's a battlers thing whatever you want to say but i ended up going with that because you know it's if you take out the hashtag battlers it's it's a thing hashtag battlers is a thing right but then also it's a hashtag battlers thing so you wouldn't know like like if someone says why in the world are you maxing out that registeel and giving it a double move well it's, it's a battlers thing that was my i guess that was kind of my my inspiration behind that merch design um, I'm going to put the link in the description below. Again, I don't know if it's going to be quite live yet or not by the time this video goes up. If it's not, it should be very soon. Different options for purchase that I've made available are going to be a mug, mouse pads, a t-shirt, and then a hoodie. So, and also before, before you click on it, I mean, if you click on it like right away and purchase something, thank you. Thank you very much for your support. One thing to keep in mind is I wanted the design on a plain t-shirt to end up looking more like this but literally the only option they have right now is for it to look like this, Bruh. which, you know, is not preferred for me, but if you're fine with that and you want the t-shirt anyways, feel free to purchase it. Uh, but later on, when they do have that option available to customize it and whatnot, um, my plan is to have it look like this. And also please, stream elements, please, what do we have to do to get logos and stuff on some snapbacks? This hat is getting old very very old um, for the t-shirts i do have the various team color options available um the logo itself i could only i really was only given the ability to upload one color unfortunately i wanted all the colors to be on there so you know, again i apologize for that but at least specifically for the t-shirts i did make available um red yellow and blue you'll still have options with that but again thank you for watching subscribe if you feel my vibe and power up the notification bell for all the pvp content that's it for this Go Battle Ultra League video. We'll see you in the next video. Battlers, have a good stinking day, man.